Hello students, I am Professor Ajmer Singh Malik from Kurukshetra University, course coordinator for the course State and Local Governance, Machinery and Processes. This is the second theme of this fifth week. We are going to discuss and deliberate that is evolution of district administration. In this deliberation, we have divided the evolution of district administration under four headings. That's district administration during the ancient period, district administration during the Mughal period, district administration during the British period, and district administration in post-independence period. But the focus of our discussion will remain on the British period. The reason being that the district administrative system which is existing now was formalized during that period. So let us start with the ancient period. Our understanding of the state system during the ancient period is mainly based on the Kautilya's Arth Shastra. That is why to refer him here, although we will take it very briefly, to refer him here that is a pertinent one. So, first of all I would like to tell you that Kautilya viewed the state as an institutional necessity for human progress. During that period, as per the Kautilya Jart Shastra, the empire was divided into home provinces and other provinces under the central authority of the king or you can say the state. The provinces were further divided into the districts and districts were divided into the urban and rural centers at all levels means from village level or the rural centers or the urban centers or the districts, district centers or the provinces as well as the central authority. There, were, there was a team of officials working under the king rather we say the assisting the king. It was not a democratic system like we have today but there was a line of authority running from the central government to the uh, to the field level that is rural and urban centers as per the Kautilya's Arth Shastra. During the Mughal period, the whole of the state, whole of the country was divided into subas. We call them provinces or states. The subas were further divided into the sarkars which are equivalent to the modern day district administrative system, although not synonymous to the present district administrative systems. Sarkars were further divided into the Parganas. Parganas were comprises of the villages or a cluster of villages. At the Sarkar level or at the district level, first there was the executive officer or head of the Sarkar and he was responsible for maintaining law and order, also responsible for executing the royal decrees means whatever the orders coming from the central or the provincial government, he has to execute those orders. He also used to keep the powerful Jamidar under his control so that there may not be any kind of revolt against the authority of the state or authority of the king. There was another official at this, this level that is the Amal Gujar or we can we say that is the revenue collector at the Sarkar level. There were other official also particularly we say the Sikhdar who was responsible for maintaining the land order at the Pragna level and assisted by Amil. Amil means who used to assess the revenue or we can say assessor of revenue. Uh, we say we have there are other officials named as Kanungo. 
who used to keep the land records and Bixi, those are the clerks. Village had at that time, there was an official called as Mukaddam. Nowadays, the contemporary position is of Sarpanch. And we say that Mukaddam was responsible or performed the functions locally. The Patwari also assist him in taking care of the village revenue records. In nutshell, we can say that there, are, there were two functions or officials were appointed from village to the provincial level to perform two kinds of the function. One is that is for maintaining the land order. The second is along with the maintenance of the land order, there is uh, to, uh, to take necessary action or to take precautionary action against any kind of revolt. And the second function was, second main function was, that is the collection of revenue. That was the system which was adopted during the Mughal period. Again, I would like to say that this system remained in practice during the Mughal period. It was not institutionalized like we have done it in the British period. Or we can say the institutionalization of the district administration credit goes to the British period. So what happened during this period because of which it has institutionalized, not only institutionalized, rather it has provided a very firm base to the British Empire in India during that period and thereafter we adopted it and it has been working very successfully for in an independent country. So first of all we start with the Simon Commission report. The Simon Commission observed that the district administration has some roots in the past. But until the establishment of British rule, there never existed the settled administration, discipline and strong supervision, which are essential if single officials are to be placed in charge of areas as large as Indian district and allowed the degree of independence which has been given to the district officer within the limits imposed by law and precedent. The observation of the Simon Commission indicates, number one, that the person who is appointed as in charge at the time known, at the time known as district collector was having enormity of powers and authority with him. And he can become, and because of those powers, at the time, the district collector could become as an absolute authority in the district. The second thing is, which was there in this observation, that the size of the district was quite large one that was as much large as the smaller country in case of Europe. So that's why it, uh, we can say, thus the observation has made it very clear that the district administration and the officer appointed as an in charge of that district administration is a very important one. And that uh, over the years that remained as a, uh, as a pivot for the British Empire in uh, British Empire in India or were considered to be a very significant one in the British India. Let's trace the history of the district administration during this period. The journey we can say it started in uh, 1765 when the British East India Company was granted the rights of Diwani in Bengal, Bihar and Odisha. The company interest at that time was limited to the superintendence of the collection and disposal of the revenue instead of actual work of administration. In other words, they were not engaged themselves in the revenue collection as well as not engaged themselves in the administration of that area from where they were collecting the revenue. Keeping in view the condition at the time, 
In 1769, a decision to associate English a servant of the company in the collection of revenue was taken. First time, a change in the existing administrative system was made and these officials, that is the European, were known as supervisor or supervisors. The supervisors were assigned with the responsibility to exercise supervision over the native collecting agency and to gather information about the district. Although this scheme failed, but it formed the nucleus for the first time of a British administration in the proper sense of the term. In simple words, we can say it, is, it, it was the beginning of institutionalized British administration in India. In these supervisors, in real sense, we find the predecessors of the present day district officer. In the year 1772, supervisors were given the new title of collector with new functions as well. In the year 1772, the court of directors of the company resolved to take upon the entire care and management of revenue and Warren Hastings was appointed as the governor general. Warren Hastings appointed supervisor as collectors, vesting in them with the power of management and collection of revenue. A native official under the title of Divan was appointed to assist the collector in every district. Thus, in the year 1772, during the time of Warren Hastings, the office of collector was established in India. He was assigned with the responsibility of collection and management of revenue in the district. He was also assigned with the responsibility to deal with the cases of civil and criminal jurisdictions under the judicial plan of 1772. This, the judicial functions were the additional responsibility assigned to the office of the collector or the person who is to be appointed as the collector. Thereafter, in the year 1774, collectors were withdrawn from the districts and native omils were appointed in their place. The superintendents of the collection of revenue was removed from collectors and assigned it to the provincial revenue councils located at Calcutta, Murshidabad, Dhaka, Patna, Burdwan and Purnia in case of Bengal. This was in case of Bengal. Here reference is not made to the provinces of Madras and Bombay. In the year 1781, collectors were reposted to the districts, no doubt with the limited powers this time. And it was after the Pitts India Act, which was passed in 1786. While doing so, obviously, provincial councils, which were looking after the revenue collection functions, were abolished and the revenue administration was concentrated in the committee of revenue at Calcutta, which was reorganized as board of revenue in the year 1786. Please try to find out what is the board of revenue. In 1786, the court of directors decided to retain the collectors and it stated that it should be made as the permanent features of the local administration. Local administration here means the district administration which is in direct contact with the people. The court of directors also informed the governor general at the time Lord Curzon that the office of the collector, civil judge, 
and magistrate should be united in the same person means the concentration of executive functions and the judicial functions in one person which is known as at the time the district collectors. The concentration of authority in the district officer made him immensely powerful local authority within his jurisdiction. As Espimal states, the district collector was a semi-absolute monarch ruling over a territory as extensive in area and population as some of smaller countries of Europe. In the year 1793, Lord Cornwallis separated revenue and judicial functions and placed it in different hands. District collector was assigned with general administration including police functions. Civil, judicial and criminal judicial functions were vested in the judge magistrate. In actual, the Lord Cornwallis was not in favor of uniting the magisterial functions or the judicial functions and executive person at the district level in one person. Therefore, he separated these functions during his term. He has reduced the powers of the district officer or the district collector in such a way that now the collector was made to be answerable before the ordinary courts for unlawful acts done in his official capacity. Means the judicial officer at the posted at the district level was made superior to the district collector. Uh, in, in other words, we can say judge magistrate became superior to the district collector and that diminished or reduced the authority of the district collector. Based on the distinctions of the separations of executive and judicial powers, there are two schools of thoughts or we say there are two schools of thoughts on district administration. And these schools are number one, Cornwall's school that was in case of Bengal. The district officer or the district collector was divested with the judicial functions. He was left solely with the revenue collections and came to known as orthodox system. Means this Cornwall's system is also known as the orthodox system. And there was no officer at a district level to have overall responsibility for the, for the control of government activities in the, in the area. Means this school of thought on district administration, they say there is no supreme officer like it was earlier in the British period. That the governmental activities were performed by the different officers and more or less those were independent within their jurisdictions. The another school, the second school, number two we can say, the Munro school that was in Madras and Bombay at that time, in Madras and Bombay provinces at that time. As per this school, all powers are concentrated at the district level in one functionary namely the collector, which made the officer an effective ruler with discretionary authority. And uh, we say this system was also known as the paternal system. Virtually the collector became the mabap of the district. Means mabap means that every power, every kind of authority and power was vested in the office of the collector. Thereafter, certain administrative reforms were introduced, particularly during the period that is 1829 to 31. And uh, we say that emphasized, during the reforms emphasized the need for Munro system, means concentration of powers in the office of the collectors. In the year 1859, 
British government directed that the offices of magistrate and collectors were now disunited as in case of Bengal should be combined in the same person means like it was there in there under the Monroe school of head Monroe school of district administration where the powers magistrate powers and executive powers were revenue collection powers were vested in the office of the collector. The district magistrate and the collector became a representative of government in his area who could wield undisputed authority and exercise wide discretionary powers, again making him as the superior authority that made to retain colonial power in India. With the passage of time, the powers and position of the district magistrate and collector were greatly reduced by laws, rules and regulations. For example, like land revenue, tenancy laws, penal courts, criminal procedure courts and the civil procedure courts the police act of 1861. These laws, rules and regulations under these laws that reduced the power of district collector and magistrate because as per the rule of law, the collector has to take, collector magistrate has to take the decision according to the norms prescribed by those laws and rules and regulations when the collector magistrate was not having much wider discretionary powers. The discretion was limited by the law and rule and regulations as we discussed and deliberated just now. In addition to these law rules and regulations, specialist departments were also established at the district level or they came to the scene at the district level. A number of departments which are technical in nature, those appeared at this level of administration. When we talk about the technical administration, like we can say health department, we can say the education department and other so many other departments also. In this way, the responsibility of administration which was concentrated in one person was divided among us a number of officials who looked to their respective department heads at the headquarters for order and guidance instead of collector magistrate or the district collector who is the superior officer at the district level. The district boards and local boards were also established. District boards and local boards means the Panchayati Raj institutions and the municipal institutions. Those were also established after Lord Ripon's resolutions on local self-government in 1882. But despite all this, district officer continued to be responsible for the administration of the district as a whole as the chief agent of the government in, this, in the area means he is the chief agent of the provincial government at the district level. The subdivision came into existence in 1829. In Mughal period also, the Sarkar were divided into Parganas. I have stated about it earlier also in a very brief sense. Rather, I referred it instead of discussing about it. C. E. Buckland observed. The subdivision system had grown under the pressure of circumstances. The first division was created in Bengal at Khulna. Now it is in Bangladesh. In 1838, the police committee appointed under W. W. Bard, government of Bengal, recommended the creation of subordinate magisterial jurisdiction to bring protective machinery of government near to the people. And as a result of that, in 1842, the posts of deputy 
magistrate were created by a regulation in the year 1844 on receipt of orders from court of directors sub divisional officers in bengal were started on experimental basis the court of directors sanctioned 16 such sub divisions later on this system was extended to all to the entire province and placed under the sub divisional officer in provinces where the permanent land settlement was yet to be undertaken there was a unit known as tahsil or talukas lower than the sub division level except in bengal the district administration in india was in fact created by the land revenue system the splitting of territory into district was mainly because of this region gradually this has become a unit of general administration as well the technical and the specialist departments were also set up as the field operations of the respective departments at the provincial level the as the concept of district administration is the outcome of gradual process of evolution it is a dynamic concept and has undergone many changes since it was created during the british period even now there have been many challenges before the district administration and those changes are taking place with the changes taking place in the political and social economic life of the society till some years ago in most of the states the district collector was the head of the government at the district level responsible for a diverse portfolios of functions responsible for a diverse portfolio of functions ranging from delivery of essential services land revenue administration execution of rural development programs disaster management maintenance of law and order and collection of excise and transport revenue as such virtually all the instruments of the state government that operated at the local level did so in conjunction with the district administration either formally or informally in this regard structurally diverse arrangements were built up over the time the relationship and the reporting structures range from the collectors understanding broad oversight supervision of the activities undertaken by line departments to specific day to day management of some activities in recent years however the department have tended to function increasingly as vertical silos up to the state levels and as stated earlier the gradual empowerment of local governments in changing the role played by the district collector in matters of local government has changed i thank you all to participate in the course on state and local governance machinery and processes hope this 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 talk has enabled you to understand how the district administration has evolved and how it has been serving the interest of the society as well as the interest of the government or the authority or at the time or at the time during the british period the colonial power naturally keeping in view the objective it has served since last 3 centuries we can say that this level of administration is a pivot of 
not only of the state administration, rather the administration of the whole of the country. That's why the finest officers are being appointed to head that state administration. Hope it will serve the interest of the public interest in a more beautiful and more efficient and effective manner. Thank you very much to be with us. If you have any questions, you post your questions on the discussion form. I would be happy to clarify about the district administration and the role played by this kind of administration. Thank you, you all.